mean, I've said it several times. I mean, this is one of my favorite teams to be around right now. No matter what you throw at them, they respond. They love football. They work really, really hard at football. And uh, they give you everything they have. Um, it's a fun group to be around, fun group to coach. Um, and, uh, you know, that hasn't changed. Who, in your estimation, has had the greatest gains during the offseason? Has it been the offensive line, receivers? I mean, what do you think of I mean, a lot of guys have had gains, you know. Um, you know, the offensive line will be much better than it was a year ago, but not where it should be yet. I mean, Aaron Montero was a true freshman last year. He's just getting ready to become a true sophomore. You know, really mature, good lines, mature in their redshirt junior years. You know, that's, you know, when we, the first two years we had a veteran older, we implanted a couple of fifth year guys, you know, with Ian Silverman and Matt Patchen, who were really good football, you know, ended up being pro football players. And we were strong, we were really strong. And I've said it several times, I really don't need to repeat myself, but when you have nine guys that should be fourth and fifth year players in the front, that's how you keep your deal going. When you have to replace that from one extreme to the other, that's what happens, okay? Well, now we got the right guys there. But you gotta, you gotta, set, you gotta mature them. They, it, it, you know, there's still a big difference between an 18, 19 year old kid and a 21, 22 year old kid. Am I happy with who we have? Absolutely. Are we gonna be better? Absolutely. Are we where we're going to be in another year or so? No, no, we're not. Because it takes a while to mature a veteran offensive line. The next position that's a lot like that is quarterback. You know, we didn't have an older quarterback in this program, okay? The oldest guy we had was Darius Wade, who took no snaps. So, you know, he he gets hurt, and, you know, now you're transplanting in freshmen, redshirt freshmen, and walk-ons. Well, I, I just read an article with Jimbo in the Florida State article. You're not doing I mean, that's not going to happen. Your best hope with that is maybe a redshirt freshman that came in early, Darius, <laughs> you know then support them with a veteran offensive line and veteran players to hold, hold that. But when that line's not that way and then the quarterback's not, not that way, you can't fix that quick. Now you got to saturate. So Patrick's here and Darius is back. They've both had a great off season, a great spring, and they're having a really good camp. So I'm happy with that, you know? And that's the only way we could plug that void, okay? Um, and now we have Anthony Brown and John Fadul in there. And those guys can saturate the way you should and grow and develop. And then, you know, in a perfect world, you know, you've got, you've got Patrick and, and, and Darius. Patrick's got this season. Darius has this season plus two more. And then you have Anthony Brown, who's been here in the winter. And then he's going to be here in the spring. He's going to uh, be here in summer camp. He's going to be here for the year. And you've got another saturated guy. You've got John Fadul, who by fire, got some playing experience. And now you're starting to build, you know, some quarterbacks that you hope you'll never be faced with that, of course, barring injury, which you can't predict. You hope that you won't be faced with the two most critical positions for that to happen to again. And when your program's right, I remember a coach of Beamer at Virginia Tech when I first got to Syracuse. When your program's right, and you've been there, and you've recruited, and you've, and you've recruited your classes properly, the only time it can get you again is if you had a bunch of guys leave early. So we had a big senior class and a bunch of guys leave early. That's the only way it could really get you again. Otherwise, you should be able to roll that thing over reasonably each year. Okay? And that's the goal. We will be able to do that now as we move forward. The only thing we have to do now is we've got to mature this group up. This is a heavy, heavy, you know, filled with true freshmen, redshirt freshmen, redshirt sophomores. And, um, but having said that, they love football and they compete. So that's fun. It's, it, I really like it being around it. And they're going to win their share of games uh, because of flat love of the game, toughness, and, and everything that goes along with it. And, uh, and, we're, and, and, and then exactly we're going to be better at each one of those positions, right, than we were one year ago. That'll happen. And it's got to be better enough, but it'll it'll be better. There's no doubt. The offensive line will be better. The quarterback play will be better. The kicker play will be better. Although I didn't see that today. Um, and uh, but I've seen it all spring and I've seen it all camp.
as, as short as we've been here in camp. And uh, so a lot of those areas are shored up, you know, and, and I feel real good about where we are defensively. We have some really good personnel. It's, this is a personnel-driven game, okay? It's what it is. I mean, you know, so we got good personnel there, and they're older, and they're seasoned. Because why? Because we started building it there first. Because the whole emphasis of our program, my philosophy coming here was, you start with building your great defense and playing great defense. So this, everything is done with a plan. It's not this herky jerky that sometimes I think people think it is. It's not. Okay. So you recruit that way. You put your best players there, and you filter them, and you build your system. And, and the way our roster was built, here comes the offense now. Now we're going to have to do this with the offense and grow incrementally, which we're going to do.